Okay, uh, this is our last lecture in this course. It's on simple linear regression. So uh, what we will do in this lecture is we will have the situation where we have two variables and we would like to see if there is any relationship between the, these two variables. Once we establish that there is a relationship, uh, you will understand what regression means. Regression is after you establish that there is a relationship between your variables, then the regression describes this relationship. It tells you if this relationship is um, linear or nonlinear, if it's uh, positive or negative, and so on. So if you look at this picture here, the one that you see, um, it's uh, a picture of the body mass of uh, animals against their brain mass. Okay, and the, the word log, uh, don't worry about it for now. Uh, it's the logarithm, yeah, but um, it will not affect you if you don't know what is logarithm, but it's used to simplify uh, the way we represent the data in the xy plane. So notice here that on the x-axis, I have the body mass. So this is uh, your weight, for example. And on this uh, y-axis, I have the brain size. So uh, people are interested to know if there is any relationship uh, between your body uh, weight uh, and your brain size. If you look at this picture, let's try to find where are human beings in this picture before we go to the next slide that I will explain more things about this uh, picture. So uh, let's say uh, we go to our calculator and I will show you something. So we will take the log of your body mass. Okay, what is your body mass? Let's say that you are 65 kilograms. Let's say you're a female and you are 65 kilograms. So this means 65,000 grams. Because the, the picture that I showed you uh, is given in grams. Okay, so you'll say equal. So you have this number, 4.81. Uh, this means that we are, or you are, 4.81 somewhere here that is the log of your body mass and your brain uh, size for human beings i actually can show you on the next uh, picture uh, for uh, in men and women in men the average weight of the brain is about 1370 grams this is for men and for women or females it's about 1,200 grams. So uh, let's go back to the calculator now and say that for a woman, uh, it will be log of 1,200 grams because we are using grams in this case. That will be what? 3.08 approximately. So 3.08, that will be somewhere here. So now if you move this way and from here you move up you will see that you are actually human beings are uh, under this x and actually this picture contains uh, almost all the animals all the um, uh, possible animals so for for example you have the fish the amphibians the reptiles all of them are here the mammals are uh, here and then the primates which human beings are part of even a little bit higher yeah, they are primates, but they are, um, in terms of this uh, body mass and the brain mass, they are a little bit higher than the primates. And the birds are here, the dinosaurs are here, uh, okay? And one thing that, you, uh, that I want to make clear is that maybe if someone sees the average uh, weight of a human brain, so here is the human brain, and you read, in men, the average weight of the brain is 1,370 grams, like 1.37 kilograms. And for uh, females, it's 1.2 kilograms. People take this and say this means that uh, males are more intelligent than females. But actually, this is wrong. Um, we can prove now that um, females are, uh, have the same intelligence or even more than males based on the data that we have. So I would like us to first agree on something. We will uh, call something the intelligence ratio. So intel, 
this from intelligence ratio let's say that this is equal to we divide the log of the brain mass so the y of this uh, graph over the log of the body mass so uh, let's see so we have two situations the first one in male and the second one in female let's compute this and check so for males you know it will be a log of the brain mass on average it's 1370 over log of the body mass the average body um, weight of males uh, adult males of course is about 80 kilograms this is on average so 80,000 grams okay which is equal and I will leave a uh, space here to write it and uh, for females we have log of 1200 that's the average um, brain mass divided by log of the average body weight of females, if you take it all over the world, it's about 65 kilograms. So this will be 65,000 grams, which is equal to, and we will keep it here. Notice one thing before we continue. This is in grams, and this is in grams. So when you divide them by each other's, you don't have any units for this. So this intelligence ratio is unitless. It's not given in grams or anything. The gram cancels the gram, and so you don't. You just, it's just a number, okay? And so let's use the calculator to check. So um, first we do the, let's say do the males or female. It doesn't matter. If, okay, males. So log of one thousand three hundred seventy. This is the log of the brain uh, size over the log of the average body size. So eighty kilograms, which is eighty thousand grams. So we get 0 0.6397, 0 0.6397, so here 0 0.6397, good. And for females, let's compute it, that would be our intelligence ratio, okay, here. So I, I will put it there, it's 1200, the average brain size, over 65 kilograms, which is 65,000 grams, this will be Okay, so it will be 0 0.639, then seven, after the 7, there is a 7, so 8, 6398. So we go back, and we will put it here, 0 0.639, oh, look, 8. So actually, the, the female intelligence ratio is higher than the male, by a little bit, yeah? It's, uh, it's negligible, kind of, but still, if you are a female and someone tells you, yeah, your brain size is smaller than mine, so I'm more intelligent, you tell them, no, 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 no. You have to compute it this way. The, the brain size compared to the body size, that's how we should do it. Because uh, the bigger the brain, uh, the more complex um, tasks that it can do. Okay, And even the slightest difference means a lot in this case. For example, maybe for dinosaurs, because people want to know, are dinosaurs intelligent or not in terms of this intelligence ratio? So, um, actually, the largest dinosaur that I know about was um, 62 metric tons. A ton is 1,000 kilograms. So, 62,000 kilograms. So, this means 62 million grams. That's their... Uh, body weight or body mass so uh, and their brain size if you see here let's choose the biggest one of them this is a little bit above eight so first i need to know this 62 million what would be its log so log of 62 metric tons so 62 million grams is equal to yeah 7.8 is the log so we have to go back and see where is 7.8 it's about here so go up, and let's say, yeah, it's this one. Let's say that this is the largest dinosaur, and you go this way, and you see, oh, the, it's, this is about uh, almost about 1.5. So um, you can say that, how about we divide this, so 1.5, so first uh, AC, so uh, we do this log, they have... 1,500 grams, that's their uh, brain size, and over 
log of uh, 62 metric tons, so a million here, and you get 0 0.4079. So see, 0 0.4. 0 0.4 compared to human beings, you see, the dinosaurs are 0 0.40 something. They are so much less. In this case, with this intelligence ratio, a very small difference in, in this ratio makes a huge difference in the intelligence, okay? So this is telling you that even though the dinosaurs had very big uh, body mass, but their brain was not big compared to the body, okay? And that's why they're not as intelligent as human beings. So I hope that this at least made you understand uh, something about it, about the uh, brain mass and the... Uh, body mass and the uh, intelligence ratio. But the idea of this uh, chapter, this last chapter in the course, is to look at this picture and notice something. If you take the primates, for example, the red part, uh, do you see that I can uh, create, let's say, uh, a line and, you know, a thick line and contain all of the red dots in it? So this is a line that is approximating our data. So, because we saw that the data seems to be clustering around the line, so the real uh, line is here. So, there is a line that is closest to all the red dots, and the red dots are distributed kind of evenly around it. And this is what we will be looking for today, is that if there is a relationship between two variables, we are interested if it's a linear relationship. And if it's increasing or decreasing, that's not an issue. So, uh, for example, if uh, if you have this line that is going up, you know that its slope is positive. And in this case, we will say that there is a positive linear correlation. Uh, so if x is increasing, then y will also increase with it. Sometimes you have the opposite thing, that as x is increasing, y is decreasing. That's with other questions, I mean. Uh, so, for example, if you want to think of an example where it's uh, this situation, you think that uh, in uh, as the temperature increases, people usually uh, buy less uh, coffee, uh, less hot coffee, because no one wants to drink coffee in the summer. So as the temperature is going up, the sales of coffee goes down. And maybe this is why you can justify that they try to sell you the iced coffee in the summer so that they can make up for the loss they will get from not being able to sell real hot coffee. Okay, that's one thing. But what we're interested in in this lecture is to take two variables and check if there is a relationship between them. And we are only interested in linear relationship, that the data that we get are clustering around some line that we will also learn how to find. So, good. Now, Lernoud uh, wants to teach you. She has a way of teaching this correlation and regression. And she has seven pages. Uh, in the following seven pages, she will show you everything in her way. So let's uh, go with uh, this journey with Lernoud and understand correlation and regression. And after this, we will start the lecture. But as you know, Lernoud gives you an example that covers the whole ideas. And it's good to watch it first. And then you start learning the subject. That's the best way to learn. And it will take her about maybe 20 minutes to give you everything you need to know. So let's start. Now, uh, what is this linear correlation and regression all about? Now, let's see the example. Suppose we, that we want to check if there is any relationship between, and of course we're interested in linear correlation, between the number of hours you spend studying for the final exam, and we will call this our x, the horizontal variable, and y will be the grade score on the final exam out of 100. That will be our uh, vertical uh, variable on the vertical axis. And as you know, when you have x and y, x is called the independent variable and y is the dependent variable. So x is iv, independent variable, and y is dv, it's the dependent variable. So x changes and y depends on the change in x and it changes uh, accordingly. So this is usually what it means. So now think about it. Now as we are coming to the final exams in about... Uh, 10 days. So you need to understand this um, idea of uh, how many hours you should study um, versus 
what grade should you expect on the final exam? But this is, of course, this is just a sample that Lernout took. Um, I would like to just show you from her sample, what did she find? So she chose 10 students. Usually it's better to choose more. And uh, so let's say just 10. So uh, in this case, her N is 10. Her sample size is 10. And she asked them to record both the number of hours spent studying. So she would come and ask you, how many hours did you spend studying for the final exam? Let's say for statistics. And then you will give her that number. And then she wants also to know your grade on the final exam out of 100. So you say, like, I got 85 over 100. And I studied, you can say, for nine hours. Or, you know, on average, you know, uh, you will see in the table what she got. So let's see. Uh, Lernout got the following table of pairs of data, x, y. So uh, student number one studied two hours only. And her grade was very bad on the final. She got 23. And let's say student number six studied 8.5 hours and she got 82 on the final. Uh, don't take this as a rule, okay? This is, it's of course proved that the more hours you study, quality hours, of course, the more you study for the final, the better the grade will be. It's actually, it makes sense even. You would agree with it even without any proof of it. But Lernoud wants to prove it to you also. So, uh, for example, this student number eight studied 11 hours and she got 100. So, and so on. Someone studied four hours and got 42 uh, on the final exam. So let's continue and see. If you graph this data, here Lanud already uh, put the data in a table, okay, and went to Dismos and graphed uh, the data. Look at the data, the dots, the red dots that you see here. Look at them as a whole. Do you believe that there, they are uh, can be approximated by a line? Like I can put a line kind of here and all the data are clustering around this line. Yes, we see it clearly. It, it, uh, this graph here, as she tells you, the graph strongly suggests that there is indeed a linear correlation between X and Y, that we can find a line that approximates or fits this uh, data. Lernoud also will show you how to find the equation of this line. Not only that you see it, but you also can do it, can find this equation. And you know that for a line, only you need to know the slope, uh, so mx plus the y-intercept b. Okay? Lernoud just wants you to know something, that in our case, the slope, we will call it b1 times x, plus the y-intercept, we'll call it b0. If you forgot what these things are, um, it shouldn't be okay, because this is just equation of a line, slope and y-intercept. Remember, what is the y-intercept is when you substitute x equal 0 in the formula, so this goes away, so y becomes b0. So it's, that's why we call it the y-intercept. It's when x is 0, what is y? Good. So now, um, well, okay, let's keep it. So now uh, let's go to the next page. She tells you on the next page we will compute uh, this uh, sample correlation coefficient r. Now, at the end, of course, of these seven pages, Lernoud will give you a summary of this whole process. But just know that once you graph uh, the data, the x, y pairs, and you see that uh, they are, it seems that they have. Uh, correlation. There is a linear relationship between them. It's, it looks like it. Then you start asking what, uh, there is a number that will uh, tell us how strong is this uh, correlation. This number is called R. It just measures the strength of the correlation. And how is it computed? You can now, and please do it now, get your calculator, so uh, your Casio calculator or any calculator you have that you know how to use. But if you have this calculator or any equivalent one, then the steps of finding the uh, regression, uh, I mean, uh, finding this uh, correlation coefficient R is very simple. Mode, then put three for stat, then uh, put two for A plus BX and keep on going like this. And then at the end, it will give you this correlation coefficient. So what do I want you to do now is to go and copy this table. This is, this is your table, the table that you will insert inside the calculator here when it tells you enter the X and Y values. 
these are the X and Y values. These are the X values, you enter them, and these are the Y values. So please do this now. You could pause the video and just enter them. Make sure you enter them because the best way to learn this subject is to do it with me. It's it's best way. Uh, don't wait and uh, watch me and do it later. It's better. Just do it now. Get your calculator and do it with me. So let's see. Uh, here uh, she's uh, giving you a space to put the R. Of course, I already uh, helped Lanud and I put it here in my online calculator. I mean, this is a program that I have on the iPad. It's called uh, StatMate. And I entered, uh, as you can see, the X's and the Y's here. So now I will say calculate, and it's giving me the answer here. So the answer actually, I uh, have it in the file here. I'll just make it bigger. You see it, it's there. It's just I took a screenshot of what you just saw, and you notice what is the correlation coefficient r, it's here. So I'm going to just write it down. It's 0 0.99123, so I'll just put one, two. Usually take um, four digits. If you want to take five, you will be more accurate, but four digits are enough. And maybe your calculator also gives you four digits. That's fine. Perfectly fine. Now, is this number good or bad? Okay, this is a good question to ask. Does this mean something good or something bad? Actually, it's a very good number. Usually, this R that you have is from negative one to one. And the closer it is to one or to negative one, the better, the more stronger the correlation is, the linear correlation in this case. And so we found it. There is something called R squared, but I really, I would love to talk about it. It's just squaring this R and it has a good meaning. It, it tells you exactly how to interpret this correlation, but uh, we will not have time to talk about it. It will be for the next statistics course. Okay, so forget this. Now the B0 and B1, are the ones that you see here, the B0 and B1. Your calculator is also um, capable of doing this. Just uh, you get all the steps up to six, and then in the seventh step, you will find uh, A and B, and A will be your B0 and B will be your B1. But I will do this later, okay? That's for finding the equation of the regression line. You see, uh, we could kind of stop here and tell you, okay, this is B0, this is B1, and this is R, and we can finish in five minutes the whole lecture. But you need to understand what you're doing. That's why we'll spend some time making you understand. So remember, we computed R. So first we graphed this data and we found that it seems like there is a linear correlation between X and Y. And remember, X was the number of hours you spend studying for the final exam, and Y was the grade that you get on the final exam. Okay, and we found that there is a strong correlation between them. So now, uh, Lanud reminds you that, okay, our sample has 10 data in it. R, we computed it, and it was 0 0.9912. So see here, that's what we computed, 0 0.9912. And let's take significance level to be 0 0.01. So now the question is, Yes, you got this uh, answer. You got R equals 0 0.9912. Your sample was 10. So uh, is this uh, significant? Does this mean that um, if I take the whole population of students studying for the final exam and uh, I look at the number of hours they spend versus the grades, uh, would I still get the same um, similar answer? So there is a table that you see here on the right side. This table has the critical values of the correlation coefficient R. Once you get R, what do you do? Go to the table, find N. This is N here, the sample size. Okay, N is 10. We chose 10 uh, students in our sample. And then the level of significance that we're interested in alpha is 0 0.01. See, usually uh, you will be limited in this chapter just to two levels of significance, 0 0.05, so 5% or 1%. But in this case, we are taking 1% for this question. And so you go down from here and uh, to the right, and then you will get the critical value so our critical value is what? It's 0 0.765. It's this value here. Okay, good. So do, now what do I do with this critical value? 
Okay, you look at R again, R and the critical value together, and you check if I take the absolute value of R, because you know, R could be negative. In this case, it's positive, so its absolute value is the same. But if R was negative, then you will take its absolute value. And in this case, because it's already positive, it will stay the same. It will be 0 0.9912. Now, compare this R, this number, to the critical value. Which one is bigger? Of course, R. R is like 99% and the critical value is like 76.5%. So you know that absolute value of R is bigger than the critical value. And so the decision rule, if absolute R is bigger than the critical value, the population correlation is significant. So I can continue. So I will continue with the finding the uh, regression coefficients and finding the regression line. If, um, if you found that the absolute value of R is less than the critical value that you get from the table here, then you just stop. You just say there is, apparently there is no uh, linear correlation for the population based on my sample. Okay, and it could happen. Uh, we will have an example where it happens that R in absolute value is less than the critical value. And so we will just stop there. We cannot continue. So now Le'anoud is asking you, write down your decision. Well, what is our decision in this case? We found that R, the absolute value of R, is bigger than the critical value here. So I will just say from here, so therefore, since, you can say since, absolute value of R in our case is 0 0.9912, which is bigger than the critical value, which is for our case, it's 0 0.7. 6, 5, okay, and this critical value is when you choose n equal 10 and level of significance 1%. It all depends on the level of significance you choose and the sample size, uh, the critical value. So, okay, so every question will be different for the critical value. You compare it to R, you found that it's bigger. So you say, since this is the case, it's bigger, uh, the correlation is significant or the population correlation is significant is significant and we continue with this question so we can we can compute the regression line so see it's it's very simple okay just compute the r using your calculator this correlation coefficient for the sample and then find the critical value uh, based on the level of significance that is chosen or that you choose and then compare r and the critical value Actually, the absolute value of R, if R was negative, just take its absolute value. And then based on uh, the decision rule that you see here, you know whether you need to continue uh, finding the regression line or not. In this case, we found that it's significant, the population correlation. So this means, what does it mean population correlation is significant? It means that if you take all the students, let's say, of Zaid University as your population, then the number of hours spent studying is has a strong relationship with the grade that you uh, get on the final over the whole population of students now. Okay, that's what Le'anoud was doing in this slide. Now, to find uh, the regression line, notice, please look at this seventh step here in the steps. The steps from one to six, they are exactly the same as the steps steps here that you have from one to six so if you're please do not um, turn off your calculator or uh, do anything just keep it on r you found the r and then you only have to change the seventh step to find uh, b0 and b1 so in the seventh step you press one to get a and two to get b but for us we will consider a as uh, we'll call it b0 and b will be called b1 so, you know, your calculator is doing y equals a plus bx, but we want to write it just as b0 plus b1x. So, your a, the a that you get from your calculator, is what we call b0 in our lecture or in this chapter. And the b that you have in your calculator that it gives you, it's, uh, you record it as your b1, as the coefficient or the slope of the line the coefficient of x. So, uh, so Le'anoud is asking you here, find uh, b0 and b1. So please use your calculator to find them. And 
I already computed them on uh, the calculator before. If you remember, I took the screenshot here. So B0 is this and B1 is this. So let's copy them. So B0 is 6.20. I'm just going to take two digits, 6.20. So 6.20 and B1 is 9.07 because after the 6 there is 7. So 9.07. So I will put here 9.07. Good. So this means that my regression line, I will write it as y hat. Always we write it as y hat equals uh, B0 plus B1x. And so our B0 is 6.20 plus uh, B1 is 9.07 times X. This is the equation that we were after. So how about we do it like this and the Y hat and I will highlight it. So this is our equation now. Uh, and we leave the equal sign with it. Okay, good. So now... Uh, Lanud also is showing you that if you use Dismos also, uh, you can find the B0 and B1. Here is B1, here is B0. Of course, they do them to five digits, but it's okay. Uh, in, in our case, it's okay to do it to two digits. And guess what? This equation that you just found, this equation here that you found on your calculator, is giving you the equation of this line, the orange line. So if you want to know, this is the line y hat equals b0, which is 6.20 plus b1, which is 9.07 times x. If you graph this line, it will be the line that best fits your data. It's the line that is closest to your data in the sense that it minimizes the vertical errors. So the, this distance here, this distance here from your point, you want to minimize these vertical distances. Uh, okay, this is something that you take in multivariable calculus. If you want to see the proof of how, why this line is the closest line to uh, the data, and it's a unique line. There is only one line that does this, and you can compute it. But for your course, you only need to use your calculator and find the y-intercept b0 and the slope b1. Okay, and so. Uh, it's the line that minimizes these distances, the square of these distances, if you want to know the precise answer. And now, a person might ask, okay, so I have this equation here, I found it. How can I use it? Okay, so now you have a linear, strong relationship between the number of hours um, spent studying for the final, which we called x, and the grade that you got on the final, which we call in this case y hat. So I'm going to use the calculator to show you something. So let's put the calculator here and we will do um, 6.20 plus the slope is, uh, or B1 is 9.07 times x. Now, for example, if someone uh, spends five hours studying, then what do you predict their uh, grade to be? Let's see. Their grade will be 51.5. So five hours, at least, you know, five hours should not be enough because you have a lot of material. So this material needs more than five hours to study for the final. Okay? And what I'm talking about is not like 10 straight continuous hours. I mean that you spend... On each lecture, let's say that the, fi the final has four chapters or five chapters, you spend two hours on each chapter. That will be 10 hours already. So if you spend two hours on each chapter, that's enough. So let's say that you spent 10 hours studying. How much would you get? Oh, wow, it's a good grade. And this is not like exactly accurate, but it's very close to what you should expect to get. So you expect to get 97 out of 100 if you spend 10 hours studying. And let's say that you spend, uh, well, put any number, let's say you spend uh, seven hours or 7.5 hours studying for the final, then you get ab about 74 out of 100 on the final. It, it kind of makes sense, yeah? But there is something also that is important that you see, is that what are the values that I can substitute for x here? Notice that the, 
the number of uh, hours is that I that Lanud found is that people uh, used the the minimum was 1.5 hours and the maximum was 11 hours for the for the students that she asked. So when you use this orange line to predict uh, how much people will get, just make sure that you take a number of hours between these two, okay? Because if you take a number of hours outside this range, uh, you might not get um, uh, you might, it might not be appropriate, or you might not get uh, what what is it called um, uh, exact answers or approximate answers. You might get something that doesn't make sense. So always, when you have your data, look at the smallest value. As you always know, for range, what do we do? Take the smallest value and the biggest value, and between these values, so uh, your x should be always between 1.5 and 11 when you want to make predictions. Uh, this means that you want to put the X here and check what the grade will be on the final exam. So another thing before we finish with, the, with this uh, is the following. Can you solve for X in terms of Y? Ah, by the way, here Lanud is asking you to predict the grades for th three students who spent three hours, 7.5 hours, and 10 hours studying. Uh, we did it already in the calculator. And now my question to you is that if you solve this equation for x in terms of y, you'll get that x is y hat minus 6.20 divided by 9.07. So what does this mean? Because x and y have a linear relationship, you can actually enter your grade and or the grade that you want to get and see how many hours you should spend uh, to get this uh, grade. So let's see this. Uh, I will just put this formula first. So um, AC, so first we need a fraction. So we have the Y or the grade on the final minus 6.20 over 9.07. Now you put here, uh, what grade do you want on the final? So someone might tell me I want 95 on the final. So this tells you, okay, so spend 9.8 hours studying, okay? Someone else might say, I only need a 70 to pass this course, and I don't want to spend more time. I want just, what is the time I should spend to get 70? So it's telling you, ah, uh, seven hours. It's kind of telling you that uh, for each extra hour you spend, you are getting about uh, nine or ten more grades. So actually, l let us understand something from here. Uh, what does this 6.20 mean? This is the y-intercept, and we called it b0. So it is uh, the grade you expect when x is 0, when you don't spend any time studying. So if you didn't spend any time studying, this will go away, and you expect, uh, imagine, you expect to get 6 on the final out of 100. This is very bad, yeah? So if you don't spend any time studying, maybe by chance you'll get one multiple choice correct. So this is what it means. Or two multiple choice corrects. If, if each one is three points, or if it's one, uh, six points for one, this is what you expect. Uh, but as you remember, the, the range that we should use for x when we use the regression uh, line should be always put an x between 1.5 and 11 because based on your sample, 1.5 was the least amount of time that a student spends on the final. You know that if someone didn't spend any time on the final, they will not go to take it unless they just want to fail the course. Because if you don't study, how would you answer the questions? So that's, uh, that's what 6.20 means. Now, what about this 9.07? What does this mean? This is our B1, or the slope. Now, this means that uh, for, each, for each one unit change in x, so for each extra hour, for each extra hour you spend studying, you spend studying, you expect to get 9.07, which is 9, more grades, more grades on the final. So th this is very nice. So, for example, if you spend 10 hours, 
you know that this will give you about 90.7. And of course, you always add the, the y-intercept to your final answer because the, the equation is the y-intercept plus this. So this number 9.07 is telling you like uh, the ratio between y and x or the slope, okay, is 9.07. So for each one extra unit for x, which is in this case for extra one, for each extra one hour you spend studying, expect to get nine more grades on the final. Perfect. So let's agree now from now that because we are convinced now that this is true, there is a strong positive correlation uh, between uh, x and y. Why I say positive? It's because it's increasing. That the more the bigger the x, the bigger the y. Okay. Uh, so you expect that if you spend about ten hours, that you'll get ninety-seven or what was it? I will just go back. Yeah, it was uh, here. Yeah, if we spend ten hours studying. We expect to get, yeah, 97 on the final. I wish you all get 100, of course. Ah, oh, by the way, if you want to get 100, so here you put, I want 100. That's the inverse relationship between X and Y. So spend 10.3 hours. So let's agree, 10 hours. 10 hours for the final. So two hours per chapter or three hours per chapter if, uh, if you have four chapters on the final or three. If you have, yeah, it depends on your course. I'm not just talking about statistics in this case. I'm talking about all your courses. Just give 10 hours for each subject. So if you're taking five subjects, so 50 hours of studying. So it's like two days of studying. Uh, okay, and of course, don't do them in one shot. That will make you sometimes get tired. So it's better to always take breaks and so on. So maximum, let's say every one to two hours, you take a break. Good. So now we are done with under. You, I think you understood the idea. This is the idea of this uh, chapter. So Leonud uh, here gives you a recap of the steps, uh, what you need to do. So you can read them. There are eight steps of everything that we've done and she's suggesting for you to print this page and keep it as a guide okay and uh, it will be nice if you print it now uh, this uh, of course this whole PDF file you find it in the description of this video so print it out and uh, keep it with you while we're continuing with the uh, lecture so now that Lanud gave you everything now it's time for a short break and after this break we will start the lecture so we'll start going to each of the topics that she spoke about in the example a little bit uh, slowly to understand it better. Okay, so I will continue in three seconds. Okay, so what is a correlation? Correlation is a relationship between two variables. And remember that the data can be represented by ordered pairs x, y. X is the independent variable, I, V, and Y is the dependent variable, D, V. Uh, yeah, by the way, the plot that you see that we plotted in the, with Lanud and before that with the uh, intelligence ratio, it's called a scatter plot. A scatter plot is when you have data. Uh, of course, if you look at a specific data, it has its X, let's call it X0, or yeah, and this is Y0. So this point here, you can say this is the point x0, y0. If you graph all your data uh, in the xy plane, this is called a scatter plot. Okay, it's just a name. That's what it's called. It's a scatter plot. So uh, it's, uh, now we tell you a scatter plot can be used to determine whether a linear correlation exists between two variables. So the types of correlation, uh, if you look at the first one here, do you see that there is a correlation and there is a line? It seems like the line should be here, that uh, the data are clustering around it, and the line has negative slope, so this will be a negative linear correlation. Because as x is increasing, actually the y is decreasing from this graph. And you see that it's strong because I can actually put a, uh, a range here of a line that is thick, and it kind of includes all the points in it. Here also I can put kind of a, a, a line, a thick line, and, and it includes all the data. My regression line is going to be somewhere here that approximates all this data together. So this will be called, since it uh, has positive slope, positive linear correlation. And actually it's a strong one. These two are strong. The first one is a strong negative linear correlation, and this is a strong positive linear correlation. 
Now look at this one here. You see, there is no way that I can get all the data within a thick line. I need a lot, and so this is not, uh, there is no correlation. Okay, I don't know whether it's going down or up, and the data is everywhere, so it's not clustering around the line. So this no correlation, or at least no linear correlation for us. And this one here, if you look at the last one, it seems that there is a correlation, but it's not linear. It's parabolic. It's like a parabola. So you can get a parabola around and get all the values. Yeah, but this is not what we're interested in. So for us, this will uh, not be a picture that we're interested in for this, uh, like for our lecture here. So this is, um, yeah, by the way, you have parabolic um, correlation, you have exponential correlation, logarithmic correlation, but you're lucky because lines are the easiest. Um, uh, uh, kind of um, uh, f functions, and so you are only studying linear correlation when you can find a line. So these two pictures are the ones that you're studying for this uh, course and this lecture. In the next course, in a higher level course or more advanced st statistics course, of course you need to also know how to do um, parabolic regression and so on, and exponential regression and uh, things like that. Okay, so the correlation coefficient, do you remember the R that we computed and you learned how to do it using your calculator? Please get your calculator now because there is an example coming and we, I will ask you again to find this correlation coefficient R. It's the sample correlation coefficient. That It has a formula, you're not responsible for this formula, but this formula can be um, derived uh, if you know uh, multivariable calculus. It can be derived very easily, really. And uh, notice that R is unitless, okay? It's because if you look here at the numerator and denominator, they both have the exact same units. And so they cancel each other's, and so R will not have any unit. So when you report your R, you don't give any unit after it. It's just a number. Okay, good. Now, R is always from negative 1 to 1. When it's 0, this is telling you that there is no linear correlation. No correlation that we're interested in once you found that R is zero. The more you go in the positive direction or the more you go in the negative direction, getting to one or negative one, the stronger the linear correlation is. So this is stronger as you go in this way and stronger as you go in this way. And negative one and one are the strongest. This one is the strongest positive linear correlation and negative one is the strongest negative linear correlation. There is nothing like there is nothing like that says that positive is better than negative linear correlation. Nothing like that. It's just either it's positive or negative. And uh, the best positive is when R is very close or equal to one. And the best uh, negative linear correlation is when your sample correlation coefficient R is close to negative one. Good. And you can see here that uh, this is a perfect one. When R is negative 1, you must have a line that passes through all the data. It's like your data fall, all of them, exactly on the line. It's similar for positive. That's when it's exactly 1. As you are near 1, if you are near 1, then it, it's okay to have some data around the line that are close to the line. Okay. And here, this... Uh, uh, graph shows you that when you have zero R, then there is no correlation. Negative one, it's a perfect negative correlation. One is a perfect positive correlation. And then negative um, 0 0.5 is moderate negative correlation. 0 0.5 moderate positive correlation. And so where are the strong positive or the strong negative? Strong positive are here. So you can say from uh, maybe in, yeah, uh, this is the strongest, of course, from 0 0.75 to 1. If your R turns out to be here, that's a good, uh, strong, positive correlation. Okay, and the similarly here, from negative 0 0.75 to negative 1, okay, this is where you have the strong negative correlation. Now look at some examples of uh, R's that are given. These are the R's that are for the graph that you see. Notice that this is negative 0 0.91. It's very close to what? To negative 1. So this is a strong negative correlation. And notice that I can put all the data kind of in this uh, thick line. 
Okay, and the same thing here. This is a strong positive. Uh, the weak positive. Notice that when R is 0 0.42, you see 0 0.42 is going to be somewhere here. This is a weak positive correlation because the, the 0 0.42 is here, and you can see it clearly that I cannot find one line. Maybe it's like this. The or, or you can say that I need a thicker. Uh, range to get the data close. Uh, unfortunately, also these three data that you see here are kind of outliers. If you take them out, then uh, the, uh, things will be better. If you have just these data and you don't have those four, for example, then you'll make it better. But you cannot remove data like that. You need to justify why you're removing. So if you have a sample and it gives you this, you have to be stuck with what you have, unless you have a reason why you could say that these are outliers and they were measured by mistake, whatever, then take them out and make it not weak, but you can make it stronger than what it is if you do that. And no correlation, notice that R is almost zero. It's 0 0.07, so very close to zero. It's somewhere here. This is 0 0.07, so no correlation. Okay, there is nothing I can do here that doesn't seem even, is it parabolic or is it linear? No, it's not, it's none of them actually. So, and uh, at least in this case, we're interested only in linear. So you see that there is no linear correlation in this case. Okay, Lanud now has two questions for you. Let's, uh, I will keep this one for you to do. So you do it. And this one, I will do it with you. So this one, happy face because we will do it now. So it says, Lanud is telling you, here are several scatter plots. The calculated correlations are, and she gives you the four calculated correlations, and she's asking you to match them with the A, B, C, and D. Okay, so let's see. I would like you to look at the graphs first and try to see which ones have kind of a strong um, linear correlation. I think that you can see with me that this one here is the strongest one, and it has a very strong negative correlation. And so it should be uh, the R is very close to negative 1. So which one is it? It's this one. Definitely it's this one. So we matched this one for sure. The second thing that you can see is this here. This is kind of a, a moderate or a little bit strong. I mean, not very strong, but between moderate and strong positive correlation. So I should get a positive number that um, is between uh, 60 and 80 uh, percent. So you notice that it's this one, 0 0.777 will be this thing here. Okay, those two are easy to detect from the beginning. Now, notice that this one here is parabolic, and so um, it's, uh, it has no linear correlation. And the one here, I want you to just look careful at it. You can see that it is kind of a negative, but very moderate, because let's say you took this one out, then you can see that you can put kind of a slab here, or a, I mean a range of a thick line, and you can get them near it. It's not good, but it's, that's why, and it's going down like this. So, it's, so when X is increasing, Y is decreasing. So you can match it with this number, negative 0.2. 487. So this one will be this here. And this has no linear correlation. So uh, you expect it to be close to zero, the R. So it will be matched with 0 0.006. Okay, good. So let's continue. Now we have an example. This example will stay with us till the end. And in some sense, that's all what we have to do now to understand this example and do exactly what Lanud did for the example of the a number of hours spent studying for the final and the grade you get on the final. Remember, that was the first uh, part of this lecture. Now we will do the same slowly, but with this example, and um, after that we will be done. So what is this example? It tells you that Copyline International, this is the name of a company, sells copiers to businesses of all sizes throughout the GCC region. Okay, so... Um, this is a picture here, and these are the people that uh, call the calls in the calling center to try to sell the copiers. Okay, and let's see. Miss Mariam was recently promoted to the position of regional sales manager. Ah, that's good for Mariam. 
at the upcoming sales meeting, the sales representatives from all over the region will be in attendance. She would like to impress upon them the importance of making that extra sales call each day. So Maryam believes that, um, let's say that, okay, you're working in the call center and you made, or someone working for you in the call center made 50 calls in one day. So you tell them, actually, if you make 53 or 54, it will, uh, it will matter this extra one or two calls actually matter and she wants to prove it to uh, the managers so she decides to gather some information on the relationship between the number of sales calls so now we need to put a line under this uh, a relationship between the number of sales calls and the number of copiers sold okay so how many calls we make and how many copiers we sell she wants to see if there is a relationship between these two. So she selects a random sample of 15 sales representatives. So I know that what you'll say. Yes, our sample size here is 15. Good. So, and she determines the number of sales calls they made last month and the number of copiers they sold. So she records for each one. The sample information is reported in the following table. So here is the table. The sales representative number one, that person made 96 calls and sold 41 copiers. Um, let's say number eight, the sales representative made 80 calls and um, sold 50 uh, copiers. Okay, you see, uh, you, you notice something? This one made less calls than this one but they sold more than that one. Yeah, it doesn't matter, of course, but uh, what you can see is that maybe some people are more um, talented in the way they speak and sell things to others. So that would be nice. Uh, when, whenever you hire people for um, answering calls, you need to interview them ahead of time and uh, check how they speak. It's just all about the way they, they speak and uh, if they're convincing or not. You can detect this in the first five minutes you talk to a person. You would know that if they know how to convince you of something, even if they're trying to convince you of an exaggerated version of something, like this copier can do uh, this and that and that, and a lot of options that you don't really need. Yeah, but uh, it depends on the person, yeah? So this is good. Uh, now, the graph also is given to you here, as you can see. The, uh, Maryam graphed it there, and she wants to show that there is a strong positive linear relationship between the sales calls and the copiers sold. Uh, of course, uh, let's say, for example, that you want to uh, see this 120 and 45. This is the X and this is the Y. So 120 is where? It's here. This is 120. And where is 45 for the Y? So we want 45. So it's between 40 and 50. So here, 45. And notice that if you go up here and this way, this here is the, the data uh, coming from, uh, I mean, the, the point coming from this data, uh, x, y, okay? And you can do all of them, of course. You can see that I have 15 uh, x's uh, and 15 y's, so I have 15 pairs, x, comma, y. I have 15 pairs, and you graph them in the x, y plane. Each of them will be a point in the x, y plane, because each point, for example, the point that we just looked at here is the point x is 120 and y is 45. This is the point here. And the other points are uh, similar. Just you take the x and the y and graph. Good. So from the graph, let's just erase and you look again at the graph. Do you see that uh, what Mariam is saying is true? That there is a strong positive correlation. Do you agree that this r here is close to 1? Of course, it's not one, but uh, what I'm saying is that it's close to one, that uh, maybe it's uh, 0.85 or something. I mean, uh, above 80. At um, The least could be is 80, just by looking, you see? And now what I would like you to do is compute this R. You remember there is the calculator here. Please do the same. Enter the X and the Y values. So this means that enter this is your X, and this here is your y. Enter them in the calculator and find r. 
So I want to remove this approximately one. Don't think that it will be like 0 0.99. No, 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 no. I mean that it's on the good uh, side of one. So it's in the strong positive correlation. Yeah, let's say above 0 0.75, definitely a picture like this. Okay, so for example, if you see, it looks kind of similar to this. This is R equal 0 0.88, yeah? So let's see, how much would it be for this graph? Uh, compute it, please. Put the x's and the y's and follow the steps here. You already did it for Leonud's uh, example that we started with. So find R and write it down. Uh, if you want, pause the video now, finish it, and then continue watching. Okay, so... Um, here it tells you compute this R and interpret it. So the, the, if you find it uh, on your calculator, you should get this 0 0.865. By the way, I did it on this calculator. I will show it to you. So I need first to go to statistics and then regression. And I entered all the values here. You can see x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3, up to x15, y15. And now I will show you what we got. So here is the picture that I got. I, I have a very good calculator, this uh, calculator that I'm using. So it's, it gives you everything here. Uh, and R, let's see where it is. Yeah, here. Here is R. So 0 0.8646. So it's 8646. Yeah. Uh, if you have 0 0.8646, the 6 will make the 4 into a 5. So good. So this is the correct R. And um, the sample correlation coefficient is positive. So we conclude there is a direct relationship between the number of sales calls and the number of copiers sold. The value is fairly close to 1. You remember I said that if something is bigger than 0 0.75, then this will be a strong positive correlation and a linear correlation, yeah? So we conclude that the association is strong. There is a strong positive linear relationship between sales calls, how many sales calls you make, and how many uh, copiers you will sell. Good. So now Le'anud has a multiple choice exercise. Let's solve it together. How about this? Determine the type of correlation between the variables. Can you choose which one is it, A, B, or C? Well, what do you notice? You notice that the line that you fit here is going to have negative slope. It's going to be going down. As x increases, y decreases. So this will be a negative correlation and a negative linear correlation. And even you can say it's a strong negative linear correlation. So this is the right answer, B, for this question. I hope you can see it. Huh? You can see that you can put this and uh, get all the points around this line. I will leave this one for you uh, because this is only computing the value of R. Uh, it's, um, it's the temperature X. So X is the temperature. This is given in degrees Fahrenheit for you to know. Okay, this is the temperature. And Y is the number of uh, cups of coffee sold. Let's say in Starbucks, this is the number of uh, cups of coffee sold per hour. Notice, just notice, that when the temperature is lower, you sell more cups of coffee. When the temperature is high, like 65 degrees Fahrenheit, you sell less cups of coffee. And this is kind of why they, uh, they introduced maybe about, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, to putting ice in the coffee so that you get iced coffee in the summer. You know, it's a good idea, yeah? So they keep the sales constant. They try to keep the sales uh, moving. Okay, and so please compute and uh, send me which one of them is the right answer for R. Now take a short break, and when you come, uh, come back in three seconds, so we continue. We are almost done. Okay, so now for this question, if you remember, the, this was the critical uh, value table. This is the table of critical values. Uh, once you computed R, remember before the break, we computed R here. It's 0 0.865. This is our R. But um, this is for the sample. It's the sample correlation coefficient. Now, the question is always, is this true for the entire population? 
Now, what is the population for this uh, question? Remember, this is uh, that Maryam is doing this for the GCC region. So uh, she took the sample of 15 sales uh, representative representatives from her company, let's say. But at the end, or not from her company, it could be from several companies taking some people uh, from each, like three from each company or two or something. And then she got that the sample has a strong uh, positive linear correlation. And she found that the correlation coefficient is 0 0.86, what? 865, yeah? So now her question is, can I generalize this to the entire population? Can I, uh, what population of what? Of sales representatives in all of the companies that are trying to sell copiers in the GCC region? Okay, so now in order for her to make a decision that uh, is it significant or not, she needs to use this table as Lernoud did in her example about the number of hours uh, studying for the final and the grade on the final. Good, so uh, let's see. Uh, first, remember that uh, we had this, uh, Maryam had 15 uh, representatives in her sample and um, what else? The R that she computed for the sample was 0 0.865. Okay, so now we just need to know what is the significance level that we want to use. Let's say that we want to use 5% significance level and pay attention carefully. So 5% significance and sample size is 15. So alpha is 0 0.5, 0 0.05 and N is 15 here. So what is the number? The number will be uh, here. The critical value is 0. Point, so I'll write it here. The critical value is 0. 0.514 uh, that I got from the table by putting the level of significance and the sample size. Remember, this sample size is, uh, is a, a, um, what is it, pairs of data. Uh, the data has pairs, x, y. Just remember that when you do linear regression, you are working in the XY plane, the dots are there and each dot has an X and a Y, okay? And so our critical value is this. Now what is R? 0 0.865. So what is absolute value of R? Since R is already positive, it stays the same, 865. And notice that it's bigger than 0 0.514, the critical value. So if it's bigger than the critical value, the correlation is significant. So now Maryam knows that uh, the population correlation coefficient will be significant, and so she can uh, um, conclude something now. She can say that, yes, the more sales calls you make, the more copiers you will sell in all the companies for my all population of sales representatives. So now a decision might be taken, increase the number of sales representatives in the company, or choose the ones, I mean, when you hire them, choose the ones that are the best in person-to-person uh, -person communication and convincing people. Okay, very nice. So uh, here, Lanud is telling you to write the decision. So you'll say that uh, absolute value of R is uh, 0 0.865, which is bigger than uh, the... Uh, critical value and what is the critical value it was for 15 so it's here 0 0.514 and so the uh, population correlation is significant so it's good it means that it's good when it's significant is good now, if you found in a question that it's less than the critical value, you will say there is not enough evidence to support the, that the correlation is significant. But in our case, it is significant. That is our case, and that's why Maryam is happy. And Lernoud also, you see, it's, she's happy with Maryam. Okay, now here I, uh, I show you the entire process. And now let's uh, solve these two multiple choice exercises. After this, what? Yeah, we still have something before another break. So here they're telling you, given a sample with n equal 20 and r equal uh, negative 0 0.541. So notice immediately that this will be a moderate, moderate negative correlation for the sample, of course. So how did I know this? Remember the picture you look at for uh, this? It will be uh, this picture here. 
So it, it's some, somewhere here, somewhere a little bit above this, so it's a moderate negative correlation. Okay, good. So now let's go back to the exercise. And uh, this um, here, yeah, and the alpha, the level is 0 0.05, the sample is 20. So 0 0.05, so this one, and the sample is 20. So the critical value is 0 0.444, good. So I will say here, critical value is 0 0.444. Notice that I've, uh, I used N and alpha together to get this. And now what do you do? Compare it to the absolute value of R. Notice absolute value of R is what? It's absolute value of negative 0 0.541. R is given here, you remember? I'll just take this and let's put it in red. This is R. And so, what's the absolute value of a negative number? It's just, it's positive, 0 0.541. This is bigger than 0 0.444. And so, uh, population correlation is significant because it's bigger. Remember, if it's bigger than the critical value, the absolute value of R, then the correlation is significant. So, which one of the choices? Uh, it is, yes, it's A. Notice, it's exactly what I wrote above. Since absolute value of R is bigger than the critical value, the correlation is significant. Good. And the second one, oh, wow, it's the same question, okay, but the alpha is different, the level of significance. So we need to combine these two to get the critical value from the table. So uh, alpha is 0 0.01 and N is 20. So we choose alpha is 1% and N is again 20. So we will go to this here, 0 0.561 is our critical value. So here, 0 0.561. And so what is absolute R? Absolute R will be absolute negative 0 0.541, which is, just take the negative away, 541. Notice, it's less than 0 0.561. It's less than the critical value. And if your R in absolute value less than the critical value, you'll say there isn't enough evidence to support that the correlation is significant. You don't have enough evidence. So we will say which one of them? Well, it's less. So it should be either C or D. And the correlation is not significant. Yeah, so it's D. Since uh, the absolute value of R is less than the critical value, the correlation is not significant. Okay, when it's less, it's not significant, the correlation. And so you would uh, not uh, continue working on the question. You don't continue finding the regression line and B0 and B1. Okay, but in the first one here, you will continue because uh, the correlation, the population correlation, I mean, is significant. There is enough evidence to show it's significant. Now, uh, some people sometimes mix correlation and causation. This means that they see that there is a correlation between uh, two variables, and they think that this means that one of them is causing the other. So I'll give you an example. Maryam, for example, uh, the head of this company, uh, she now she showed that there is a strong positive correlation between the number of calls made and the number of copiers sold. You remember that? So can we conclude that the cause of the purchase of these copiers is the sales calls? Like, is, is, are the sales call, calls causing the, the purchase of the copiers? Yeah, in some sense, you might say, yes, it's because of the call. But imagine, if they are calling at a time where an institution, like Zaid University, for example, doesn't need copiers, then uh, they will not be successful even if they try all the sweet talk. So it could be that the cause is something else. There is a, another thing that you're not taking into account. For example, it could be that the university is renewing all its copiers, and so it happened that this company is calling at the same time that they're renewing, and they're giving good offers. So this is why Zaid University will buy the copiers. It's not because the sales representative is speaking well or whatever. Uh, so you see that don't mix these up, and I will leave uh, this for you as an assigned reading. So this will be a homework as a reading. Okay, just read this page. It's, it will tell you exactly what I just said, uh, just not to confuse correlation and causation, that something is causing another thing. 
Now the regression line, of course, remember we write it as B0 plus B1x. And uh, here, if you want the formulas for B1 and B0, you have them there. But since Lernoud already covered this, I will just um, continue talking. Uh, even here, Lernoud is trying to teach you that this blue line that you see is the best fit line uh, to the uh, four red dots. So notice that this green part, the green part is the error. This is called like error one. This is error two. This is error three. And this is error four. This is if we consider that this point is x1, y1. So we call this error one. And this will be the point x2, y2. This will be x3, y3. And this will be x4, y4. The idea is simple. Just um, you want e1 square plus e2 square plus e3 square plus e4 squared. You want this to be as small as possible. You want the error, square of the error, to be as small as possible. And this by itself is enough to get the unique blue line. There is exactly a one line that makes this uh, sum of squares minimum. If you don't understand this, kind of, it doesn't matter for a statistics course. This is from calculus. You can uh, prove it very easily, by the way, if you know uh, functions of two variables. Then you do the maxima and the minima, and you can use it to prove this uh, fact, uh, that you can find the line. And also, you can find B0 and B1 that are given by the formula formulas here. Okay. Uh, notice, by the way, from this what would y bar be if you take b1 x bar to the other side it will be y bar is b0 plus b1 x bar so this means what does it mean that the point x bar y bar satisfies this equation of y hat equal b0 plus b1 x so you can say that this point x bar remember x bar is the mean of the x's and y bar is the mean of the y's. So uh, mean of the x's, comma, means of the y's, uh, mean of the y's is a point that is always on the regression line. It's always there. So I, this is written actually here. Let me highlight it. It says that the regression line always passes through the point x bar, y bar. Okay, still, it's just something for you to know. But it will not affect your ability to solve a question in this uh, lecture. Okay. And uh, here also, uh, we tell you that B1 is the slope, B0 is the y-intercept, and you can uh, look at uh, uh, how we interpret them here. Please watch the part of the video where Lernoud interpreted B0 and B1 for you for the first example. So uh, just to know, B0 is when x is 0. So when x, you put it 0, this goes away. So B0 is the y-intercept. You can say it's the uh, expected value of y when x is 0. And it doesn't always, uh, it's not always useful if, um, if the value 0 for x is not part of your range of values for x. Okay, and the slope b1, uh, this is what it means really, slope. If you took uh, an introductory course to calculus, you know what slope means. Is that as x increases by one unit, y increases by b1 units. Okay, up, in this case, if the slope is positive. And if the line was uh, had negative slope, as you move one unit in x, y will decrease by b1 units. Okay, good. So, now uh, let's just see, um, th there are four examples, but I I'm just going to talk about one of them. Okay, just I want to tell you something here. Uh, this uh, means millions of dollars. Millions of dollars. And the reason why it's written MM is from milli milli. This is how it was written before, milli milli. So people said just say millions of dollars, but still they write it MM. Okay, let's look now at just two, problem number two. Here they're giving you the regression line for um, the number of people in a restaurant, dining in a restaurant, and the cost of... Uh, the food that they would order or the, cor uh, the, the cost of the entire uh, uh, meal that uh, they take. So here it's telling you what? Uh, it's telling you that, uh, let's see, this one here is our B0 and this one here is B1. This uh, 
persons, the number of persons is our x and the cost is our y. And so it's just written as y hat is b0 plus b1x. Just know this. And what, um, oh, let me keep it, it's okay. So let's keep it, but just like this without having to say x, or just leave it like this, yeah. Uh, yeah, b0 and b1 are what's important in this case. So b0 and b1. Now what does b0 mean? It means that if there are no people coming, if, if the number of persons is zero, then you expect to pay 60 dirhams. Well, uh, it's not really true, but uh, maybe you can justify it to yourself like this. You can say that, uh, yeah, if you reserve the table and then you don't show up, they charge you 60 dirhams. Uh, just, okay, uh, take it like this. Or you can say that um, it's not meaningful because uh, persons equal zero would not be observable. Uh, you know, you cannot have no people and serve food on a table. Definitely you will not do it. But this way out that I'm telling you that if you reserve, you, you put 60 dirhams down first. So they keep the table for you until the people start coming. Now, what it's telling you here is, uh, let's just take this. It's telling you now 80 dirhams times a uh, person. So um, let's use the calculator. It will make more sense to you. So what this means, oh, what happened here? Yeah, take this out and then we will go back to the normal calculator and we have 60 plus 80 times x. x is inside here. So let, let me put times so you see it. And of course, 80 times x are together. So now if one person comes, then they expect to pay 140 dirhams. If two people come to the table, 220. And let's say you went with all your family and you are 10 people. Let's say you went for iftar for Ramadan. And then you expect, yeah, I will pay 860. So let's say 12 people. Yeah, 1,000. I'm, I'm thinking about 1,000. Yeah, 12 people. So this means that on average, yeah, kind of 100 per person in this case. Uh, but if they ask you, what does the number 80 mean? 60 is the starting point, okay? Now forget the 60, just the 80. What does the 80 mean? That for each additional person who comes, so for each increase of 1 in the x-axis, so in this case the x is representing the number of people, so each additional people that comes, you expect to pay 80 dirhams for them if you invite them, yeah? This is, and it's a plus, see? It's a plus, so this is a positive uh, linear correlation. You see, in this case, for example, negative, in this case, negative, so, and in this case, positive. Yeah, you have two positives and two negatives. So I uh, told you exactly what this means. So now your job is to do uh, one, two, and uh, one, three, and four, this, this, and this, and uh, check your answer. Here, they're all solved. What is B0 and what is B1? It's important that you know how to interpret um, the coefficients of the regression line very important okay and now you can take a short break when we come back we just have about um, i think 10 minutes to finish okay now uh, you see the calculator is uh, teaching you how to find uh, b0 and b1 the coefficients of regression and uh, what I would like you to do now is solve the example. This is still the copy line international, the example that uh, Maryam, the head uh, of this uh, company, showed us that uh, there is significance uh, to, to uh, there is a, uh, the correlation in the population is significant. Uh, what was that? It was the number of um, uh, sales calls done. Uh, and the number of copiers sold. She showed that these two variables are strongly correlated because remember she found that R was 0. Point, I think it was 865. It was um, a, a strong positive correlation. Good. So find the equation of the regression line. Let's solve A. Uh, so you can pause and solve it or if you already printed out the PDF, you can solve it on the PDF and then uh, look at my solution. It's already solved here, by the way, uh, but we will do it together. So let's see. Um, I actually solved it in the calculator. So we will go to uh, statistics, regression, 
and then these are the data, okay? You, you can enter them on your calculator, and you already did when you were computing R, so go back and just change the last step to find A and B. It's very nice. Uh, for R, remember, you, you pressed 3. Now for A and B, which are B0 and B1, you press 1 and 2. It's, it's so simple. So let's see. Uh, here, ah, yes, A is 19.98, and B is 0 0.26. Okay, good. So, uh, is there anything else I need? No, only A and B. R was computed already, remember? So, this means that we are done with, with this part in the calculator. We can go back to this and let's uh, write it here. So, B0, yeah, I need to remember. It was, yeah, uh, 19.98 plus B1 was 0 0.261 times x. Okay, this is here b0 and this here is b1. Okay, good. So, interpret uh, b0 and b1. Uh, we already interpreted uh, b0 and b1 for the example here in 2. You know, I spend a lot of time on it and I told you to do 1, 3, and 4. So now, you should be able to do it easily. So, what is b0? What does it uh, tell us? Uh, without writing its thing, it's the y-intercept. So it's when x is 0. What does it mean, x is 0? It means no sales calls were made. So it's kind of telling you um, b0 means that you expect uh, to sell uh, about 20 copiers uh, if no sales calls were made. If no sales calls were made. Uh, but uh, the thing is here, 0, x is 0 is outside the range. Let me just show you something. This is the table. The smallest value in this table, if you look careful, you'll see it's 36. And the largest value, if you look, it's 180. This is the smallest. And this is the largest. So this kind of is the range from 36 to 180. All of the number of sales calls are recorded there. And this is wh where we got the line the regression line from. So we, you cannot use the regression line for values that are outside this range. It will not be meaningful. This would be called extrapolation if you use a value of x that is outside the uh, interval for the range. So it's better uh, not to use it in this case. Uh, okay, so even though we can talk like this, we can say we expect to sell 20 copiers without making any phone calls or any sales calls. Uh, still, uh, we cannot use the regression line really in this case because um, the range of X is between 36 and 180, the number of calls uh, made that uh, we used to uh, get the regression line. What about B1? B1, we found that it's 0 0.261. So this is telling you that for each additional X, so for each additional phone call, you expect to sell 0 0.261 copiers. So for each additional sales call, sales, sales call. Okay, so I'll, I'll make sales better. So sales call you expect to sell um, 0 0.261 copiers. You will tell me, how would I sell 0 0.261 copier? Well, don't take it like that. What it means is that uh, if you make like five calls, let's, let me show you here. If you make five calls, then you expect to sell uh, 261. So, you expect to sell 1.3, yeah, that's not good. So let's choose, if you choose 20, for example. Yeah, so if you make 20 phone calls, it will make sense when you, uh, when you use more Xs. Just one X will give you just uh, um, a fraction of a copier, which doesn't make sense in real life. You know what I mean? So uh, if you say I make, let's say um, eight, for example, yeah. If I make eight sales calls, I expect to sell two copiers. And if I make, for example, 20 sales calls, I expect, I mean additional 20, I expect to sell five copiers, even though I get 5.22. But you know, when you sell copiers, it's better that you, you, you put whole numbers when you answer. So even though you will write what you have here, 
this will be written. This is the correct interpretation. But uh, in order to make people understand it better, try to find a number that when you multiply it by this, you get a whole number. Like uh, we saw, when you multiply it by 8, you get about 2. So you would say that uh, for uh, the additional 8 calls you make, you expect to sell um, how many? You expect to sell for uh, the 8, you expect to sell 2. Ah, by the way, maybe it's easier to do it this way. If you make four additional calls, you will expect to sell one, I think, yeah? Yeah, so you can say, uh, for each four additional calls that my sales representative makes, we expect to sell one more copier. This is nicer to say than uh, what is written here. But what I wrote here is the, you know, mathematical way of writing it uh, that doesn't look at the problem uh, or the interpretation. It looks just at the numbers that you have in the line and it interprets it to you using the idea of slope. Like what, is slo what does slope mean? That if X increases by one unit, then Y increases by, and then you say the slope, uh, how much, or decreases by the slope. Okay, good. So now... Uh, let's see the next one, C. How many copiers can Ali, a salesperson at Copyline International, expect to sell if he makes 100 calls? So Ali makes 100 calls. So we will use, of course, the regression line. So we will say um, Y hat of 100 calls, because the input for the regression line is the number of calls and the output is the number of copiers sold. So you enter the number of uh, calls made. So that will be 19.98 plus uh, 0.261 times X times 100, which is, and let's use the calculator So to do it. We finished almost. Just uh, bear with me until I do this. 19.98 plus 0 0.261 times 100 equals 46.08. So um, you will say 46.08. And you know this 0 0.8 uh, doesn't matter really. So it's approximately 46 copiers he expects to sell. So Ali expects to sell 46 copiers if he makes 100 um, sales calls. Very nice. You see, this regression line, when you get the formula, it helps you to predict things. But now you might ask, can I use 100? Is 100 within the range? Look, is it between 36 and 180? Yes, it's even almost like in the middle. Very nice. So the x that we are rep uh, that we are replacing in the formula is within the range. So it makes sense to use it to approximate the number of copiers that will be sold. Perfect. And the last part is which values are appropriate to use in the regression equation for sales calls when predicting the amount of copiers sold? Yeah, immediately. It's between 36 and 180. Those are the appropriate ones. And you can say that anything, anything outside this range, what range? I mean the range from 36 to 180 uh, will not be appropriate, will not be appropriate. And this is what we call, if you do it, um, if you use the regression line uh, to input an x that is not in the range, this is what's called extrapolation. Extra, so l let's write it correct, extrapolation. Okay, it's very uh, delicate and dangerous to do extrapolation. So you need to be very careful with it. Always look at your sample. The sample has, uh, the X is the sales calls, and you look at the smallest and the biggest, and within this range you can do expectation. You can use the regression line equation to do predictions. So this is why for Ali, who made 100 phone calls, we found that 100 is in this range, between 36 and 180, and that's why for him it's fine. You, he can use the regression uh, equation, the regression line equation, to predict how many copiers will he sell. Okay, and the solution is here. Now, finally, Lanud is giving you the strategy for predicting values of Y. 
this strategy is exactly what we talked about in the example while while we were solving it and so you can read it take a screenshot of this of course if you printed out the pdf you have it already keep it with you all the time when you're uh, doing predictions uh, using the regression equation and now uh, there are two multiple choice exercises what i will do is i will just tell you that for the first one if you solve it okay so it's telling you find the equation of the regression line for the temperature and number of cups of coffee sold per hour if you remember you already found r in a previous multiple choice exercise it was given to you and i asked you please find r for it was the same as this. So if you still have it on your calculator, it's okay. If you deleted it, it's okay. Again, put the X's and the Y's, the X's and the Y's in the table and find A and B, okay? And of course, A means B0 and B means B1. For the regression line, which is Y hat is B0 plus B1X. And if you do it, uh, you can pause the video now if you don't want me to spoil it for you. Okay, if you do it, you will get A as the answer. And there is a hint to it, actually, in the next part. It's telling you that, look, it is the answer, but they want you to do a prediction. So they say if you have the temperature uh, outside is 48 degrees, uh, what do you expect? How many cups of coffee you expect to sell? Now, is 48 a good uh, number? Well, you see. The smallest temperature is 25, the biggest is 65, so 48 is between them. This is okay, between 25 and 65, so it's a good number to use uh, if you want to do uh, predictions. And so we will go to the calculator and just enter this, so minus 0 0.383 times x plus 32.0. 139 so what is the x that we want to put 48 degrees equal 13.75 so 13.75 yes it's c is the answer if you round it to uh, one digit but notice that this is the number of cups of coffee sold so number of cups of coffee so in some sense you can say that number of cups of coffee needs to be a whole number, just like here, 8, 10, 11, up to 23, you see? It's always whole number. So what do you think uh, you should put? Really, what, what, this is the mathematical answer, but what in real life, what's, what should be the answer? You say, you know, 14. You can say 14. I expect to sell 14 cups of coffee when the temperature outside is 48 degrees Fahrenheit. Perfect. We are done. Now, Lanud prepared 13 multiple choice exercises for you. You see, you have A, B, C, D to each one, because she wants you to understand how to use the calculator very well to compute the sample correlation coefficient R and uh, uh, also finding the regression line, uh, Y hat equal B0 plus B1X. So, and of course, there are other questions here. The 13 questions are there, and uh, Lanud, because this is the last lecture, she has a surprise for you. She actually, um, of course, the exercises, we have five exercises here that you can solve, and Lanud put the answer key to the multiple choice questions here. You'll tell me, but they're hidden. Yes, the thing is, online, the file that I will post, they will not be hidden. You'll find the answers. So it's just like this. So if you take this out, you will see the answer. Okay, so if I take them out, you will see what is the right answer for each. So the thing is, I don't want to take them out. So the, in, the, in your PDF, they are already um, revealed. But please don't look at them. Just try solving the, the 13 uh, multiple choices. It will make you feel perfect that you understood the whole material for this chapter. Once you solve them, then look at the answer key, please. Okay, let's agree on this. We will not look at the answer key until we... Um, have solved them okay good so finally thank you for watching uh, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet and put the notification and like the video this is the most important thing is liking the video this was the last lecture for this course it was a long journey yeah, for uh, these lectures we are done with the course and the best way to finish um, our course because we are at Zaid University, 
is to uh, play the national anthem. So that's what I will do. And then, um, as always, take care. After the national anthem is done, uh, I will uh, stop the video. So um, take care, everyone. It was really a pleasure teaching you. Thank you.